St. Louis was supposed to be the gateway for Cinderella. There were two here, Oklahoma and Miami. But when Michigan State slammed the Sooners, was the slipper save for Wally Serbiak and his Red Hawks? Hardly. The Wildcat wrecking crew shattered that dream too. Cinderella was gone, only the strongest had survived. The Spartans with their unwavering confidence, drawing magical comparisons to 1979. And Tom Izzo knows it. While Kentucky's three seniors are just as resolute in focus and purpose, a salute to their championship tradition. The look says it all. No one will settle for anything less than the final spot at the final four. St. Louis will indeed provide the final piece of the puzzle. Who will be the final team to qualify for St. Petersburg and next week's Final Four? Will it be Kentucky, the national champions of a year ago, or the Michigan State Spartans? Already, Ohio State, Connecticut, and Duke have qualified, and one remains, one spot left open. Michigan State and Kentucky coming up here in St. Louis. Jim Nance with Billy Packer and Bonnie Bernstein with us as well. And uh, Billy, this Kentucky team, as Scott Padgett said, it's March, and our biological calendars have clicked in. They're playing the best ball of the season, but Michigan State has an all-time school win streak of 21 in a row. What's going to give here? Jim, in the NCAA tournament, you see so many games of contrast, but not today. We've got great point guards on both teams. We have tremendous bench strength. We have outstanding rebounding. The one thing different is that Kentucky's been there before. Michigan State's going to have to prove they can knock off the champ. And what floor leadership we have at the point today on both sides. But how about Mateen Cleaves, the Big Ten Player of the Year? Well, he is so strong. A great penetrator. We have two outstanding point guards. Neither one shoot the ball too well. And that could be interesting today to watch that matchup. But Cleaves is a tremendous leader. Now, you talk about leadership and senior. We're talking about Scott Padgett. Twice he has been all Final Four, scored 17 in the championship games the last two years. He knows how to pick it up in the big games. He certainly can be expected for that leadership again today. And there's Tubby Smith. He began the 90s as a Kentucky assistant under Rick Pitino. He'd like to close the 90s with back-to-back -back championships. Padgett and Bradley and Evans on the front court in the back court. Wayne Turner, Mr. March, along with Desmond Allison, a freshman from Tampa, who'd like to go home for the Final Four. Tom Izzo, second season, actually four overall, four seasons, and a year ago he was the National Coach of the Year. Jason Klein, Andre Hudson, Antonio Smith with the backcourt of Cleves and Charlie Bell. And let's check in quickly with Bonnie. All right, Jim, a couple minutes before the game, touch base with Spartans coach Tom Mizzle, and he said he's not so much concerned about Kentucky's depth as he is in their size. A couple things to look for to counter that. First of all, look for reserve forward Morris Peterson to play more at the two-guard or shooting guard position as I also look for the Spartans to try to get Scott Padgett to foul early. Obviously, the Cats aren't as good of a team when Padgett isn't on the floor. They know that if he gets a couple fouls early, Tubby Smith will sit up. Jim? Well, the Kentucky Wildcats. The road to the regional final began with a win over New Mexico State. That was a tie game at the half. And then the thriller, some have said the game of the tournament thus far, the overtime win against Kansas with Padgett nailing the big shot. And the victory against Miami here on Friday night. For Michigan State, the one seed, Mount St. Mary's, Ole Miss, that was a struggle. They were down with three and a half to play. And Oklahoma. Now, the Spartans say they have to be careful here. We don't want to play the jersey. It can be intimidating. Look at the lettering. Kentucky, we want to go against the play the players. That's what they're saying. Klein starts it out way short, but follows it up with a rebound. Jason Klein is a real key in this ball game for Michigan State. It's good to see him take a positive shot right away because he has not been shooting well in the tournament. How about this matchup at the point, Billy? Oh, that's a tr just tremendous. Both can guard each other. Turner, not as strong, but he's got the long wingspan. Great defensive balance when he plays, and this is going to be some matchup. 
Gets the switch on the screen. Bounces it over. Tough pass, but it got there. Hudson misses. He follows it up, and Evans clears for Kentucky. They had three chances on their first possession. But Michigan State showing what they do so well, and that is get on the rebounding glass. Which team is the better rebounding team today, you think? Evans rattles home a two, they say. On the season, Michigan State has been outstanding, but it's not like Kentucky's far behind. Michigan State, number two team in the nation in regard to rebounding differential at 9.7 a game. Kentucky right in there at 6-3, so they've been solid off the boards as well. Kentucky's out-rebounded opponents in the tournament by 10 boards a game. Hudson back out to Cleves, gets Ellison to commit, in to Hudson. Jim, I've said it time and time again, neither of these guards, in neither case should you rush out on them. Make them shoot the outside shot early in the game. Allison went for the pump fake and created the mismatch inside. That's a steps. Yep, Bradley backing in on Hudson. He traveled. You wonder why time and time again guys rush out at the likes of a Cleves or a Turner when you got to let them shoot the jump shot because they can penetrate. They don't want the jump shot. Full court pickup here by Kentucky. Man to man pressure. This is a tough guy to press right here. Although Cleves turns it over and he's had six turnovers in each of the last two games. I'm surprised he took the ball that low. Normally you want to stop if you don't have a play stop around the foul line and bring it back out He took it all the way to the baseline and Allison with his strength was able to give him a little shove This is an interesting matchup Smith on Paget. We thought it might be Hudson on yeah, Paget. I thought so This ta this takes Smith away from the basket I think he's uh, he'd be better off down inside Allison with the layup assisted by Turner Ahead to Bell, and Hudson intercepted it from his own teammate. If, if Hudson didn't realize Bell was ahead of him, he Bell would have had a layup. We know Mateen loves to throw that lead pass with that right hand. So good at it. Bell drives, gives Hudson in and out. Second time Hudson has missed one from three inches. Tough pass, and Smith read it all the way. Well, Allison had the cutter behind but you can't thread it right into a Michigan State player's hands. And you notice down the other end, it is Pageant on Hudson and Bradley going to play in Smith, so a more natural matchup. Line is second try of the game against Short. And Smith hit by Evans. This Michigan State team is some kind of rebounding basketball team off the offensive end. <laughs> and Jim, I mentioned about the situation where they've got to get Klein doing something. He was one for five against Mississippi, one for five against Oklahoma. He has got to put some points on from the perimeter. Lost his dribble and touched it last. Exactly. Kentucky ball. And we're going to see Peterson come in for Klein right off the bat. This is, uh, he, Tom Izzo cannot wait in a game like this for Klein to get on track. Got hit in the eye here a little bit, but even besides that, I think Tom Izzo was ready to yank him. So Morris Peterson, the leading scorer for the Spartans, comes in. Now this makes Michigan State a tougher team to defend because Peterson, all Big Ten, even though he's the so-called sixth man, but it does take away a little bit of the depth, and you know it's got to shake Klein's confidence. A little 1-4 set now by Kentucky. Pageant's got to find the ball somehow to make Smith play. Hashimu followed up by Bradley. And touched last by Michigan State. Michigan State 32 and 4 on the year. Their first appearance in the Elite Eight since 1979 when they went on to win the championship in Salt Lake City. Kentucky eyeing a fourth straight trip to the Final Four. They've been in the last three championship games, winning two of them. Only a loss to Arizona in the 97 final prevented a three-peat. Allison, baseline, over to Evans, two. Once again, running at men that aren't wanting to take the jump shots. Bell blocked by Padgett, and they say a charge. Bradley held his ground. Terrific job by Bradley to hustle back down court. Bell had the scene. 
Charlie Bell goes down inside. And there you see Bradley there. Padgett was uh, on top of the ball. Bell said something that I thought was great right out of a page of Ric Flair. He said, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what this game is all about. <laughs> that wrestling uh, analogy was used quite a bit yesterday when these teams talked to the nation's press. In fact, Padgett said if he had to pick one wrestler that really uh, embodied Michigan State, as we see Evans knock down a three, he said, he, they remind me if I had to pick a wrestler to compare Michigan State to, it would be Ric Flair because <laughs> they wear you down at the end. You could just see him saying that, couldn't you, in the ring? Absolutely. A neighbor of yours, no less. That's right. Again, they're backing off Cleves, and that's what you've got to do to him early in the ball game. Another great offensive oh, rebound. Peterson under the basket frees himself for two. Peterson so consistent. Evans back out. Turner gives it up. Allison, the freshman, three pointer. Patchett tip, and Smith clears. Smith, one of those wide bodies at 265 pounds. Bell had a man open underneath. Bypass the mob. And Evans with the two on one over to Turner for two. If you're going to break and Bell finds himself as a guard, that leaves only one man back. Kentucky really loves to break, particularly Evans, Padgett, Allison can get all on it. Bell has got to understand if he's going inside, there needs to be a rotation. Much more of an up-tempo game, Jim. More scoring than I expected early. Cleves, tough shot. Tipped away, and Bradley has it for Kentucky. And Evans drives right past Bell. Good night. There is that experience, Jim. It just seems like they belong in Final Fours, and Evans knows how to get there. Michigan State with its largest deficit of the tournament. The Spartans are down nine in the first five and a half. Well, Kentucky came to St. Louis this week for the first time since 1978 and the Final Four. And Kentucky met Duke in the championship game. Jack Givens, what a performance. 41 points in the final as Kentucky won its fifth national championship, 94-88 over Duke. Well, it was one of the great shooting performances, and those who watched that scene closely, Jack even banked one off the side of the backboard that went in. Jim, what's interesting about 78, Kentucky beat Miami yep, in the regional they did here, and then they beat Magic Johnson's freshman club. Kyle Macy had an outstanding game. I remember broadcasting that game, and they beat, so they beat uh, Michigan, Michigan State, State in the regional, regional final. final, and then they went on, of course, to play so well in the final four, capped off with that win over Duke. There is some symmetry, no doubt, between and the 78. That was in St. Louis and as well. All was here, yep. Well, that was Dayton where they beat Michigan yeah, State in mean, the regional the final, final. The final game was in St. In St. Louis. At the uh, Checker Dome, which no longer exists here in St. Louis. But it is an interesting path that they're trying to travel one more time. Kelly, the senior, gives it up. Cleves in traffic, loses it. McGlure on the floor, and a tie-up. Wildcats have the arrow. Will they say there was a change of possession? Now, kind of interesting, and we'll see if Tubby's going to change that. Oh! He's, he's going to the arrow. Nobody had possession. They're saying no one had possession, so he's going to the arrow. And there is a timeout on the floor. Moo Evans with nine points here at the start, and the Kentucky starters ablaze early. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile. Budweiser. Xerox and by Nike. Back at the Trans World Dome, Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Bonnie Bernstein here. Regional final, last piece of the puzzle. Jim, you have to think back to the Northwestern game in the opening round of the Big Ten tournament where Michigan got themselves in a tight situation. Since that time, they've been in pretty solid shape. They've got to be very careful here to do the things they do well. Get the ball up on the glass, have the right guy shooting. Rebound offensively. Peterson right here. Yeah, oh, look at Prince, the freshman, knock it out, and off the hands of Peterson. 
And you can see McGlure already starting to try his talking deal with Smith. I don't think it's gonna work with a guy like Smith who's just too much of a competitor. But Tubby Smith going to what he's done so well in the postseason. Brings in five guys off the bench and they have really been successful. These teams both loaded with depth and there's McGlure with the left hook. McGlure on the floor with Kamara, Hogan, Smith, and Tayshawn Prince, the second five at Kentucky. McGlure kind of like Johnson from Ohio State yesterday, picking up his offensive game in the tournament. Peterson, it rattles out, Hogan's underneath. Good blocking out by Kentucky on that play. Smith inside, Kamara, he had a strong game Friday. Now this, this philosophy of substituting this way gives so much confidence to these players. You know, they don't come in as if they're subs off the bench. They come in like they're a starting lineup, and everything is very positive. Kentucky doesn't miss a beat when they're in there. Hogan in the lane, comes up shy, but gets his own miss, and bangs it home for two. Ryan Hogan. Izzo's in serious trouble here, Jim. This game could get away from him early. I think he's got to think about timeout if they don't score here and settle this crowd down. Boy, this score reminds an awful lot of Michigan State against Duke back in early December when they were down 21 to 4 to the Blue Devils. Here it's 17 to 4. Kelly up and over Kamara. Well, terrific job by Kelly because he had to alter the shot. Kamara, who's listed at six foot ten, plays seven foot. His long arms, he's got good timing. Moore's got inside position again. This time with the right hook. No go and Spartan ball. Now, Jim, you cannot play McGlure from behind. He does not have good hands in the low post. So he's the kind of guy you play in front and let them try to make tough passes to him because he's not going to catch it as well. You give him that low post position and he does the things he can do well. Dangerous pass. Bob play and Saul Smith bumped Davis with the body. Otherwise, it might have been an easy two for Kentucky. For complete tournament coverage, live scores, stats, and more, check out Tournament Live only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. So we bring back Padgett and Turner for the Kentucky Cats. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, so Michigan State needs a screen here. Davis getting a lot of early action, trying to rest Cleves. Get his second win. McGlure doing talking and defense and at the same time. Klein pull up jumper. Klein got hit on the arm that time again. When you're lacking some confidence, every shot becomes more and more critical to you. Kentucky 62% from the field, up 11. Michigan State trails in this one, but trying to become the second Big Ten team to advance to the Final Four. And the report card here, Billy, on the Buckeyes. Well, backcourt brilliance. Anybody who saw that game yesterday saw Penn and Red. They were just outstanding. Rebounding could be Achilles' heels. Uh, Scooty Penn, one of their outstanding rebounders, and particularly when you consider who else is in the Final Four so far, and the lack, obviously, of big game experience. The last time that Ohio State was in the uh, Final Four, none of the kids on this basketball team were even born. 1968. 68, exactly. So their first trip since 68, while UConn's first trip ever. They were kind of a permanent fixture in the early 60s with Jerry Lucas and company going to three straight Final Fours. But it's been quite a drought since. Hats off to Jim O'Brien. What a story. Evans, seven on the shot clock. Evans with the right hand, followed up by Bradley. Kentucky just being dominant on the boards here. Granger was hot and continues from the outside. Had a sensational first half. Just the other day against Oklahoma where he ended up four for five, 10.7 rebounds. Back to Bradley. Oh, not this time. Tipped up by Padgett. Bradley on the previous follow-up slam. That was his first made field goal since the opening half of game one of this tournament, New Mexico State. And Bradley has really been in a drought, Jim. Three and three points the game previously, none in the ball game last the other night. Granger again, three pointer. Look at this man. AJ Granger. Junior from Finley, Ohio. Well, let's say something. You know, only one team has outscored the Michigan State bench this year. 
That was a game in that Iowa played, so this bench has been very productive. Evans, he's oh. drilling it today. That's a three at the other end. Memories of the Maryland game. Evans just sensational. He's been at Kentucky now, three years of eligibility, played under three different coaches. Although recruited by, actually, he recruited Rick Patino. So he played for three coaches and never got a chance to play for Rick. He got to practice with that 97 team that went to the final and had a huge role off the bench last year and helping the Cats to the title, the seventh in school history. Good pick and roll. Smith banks bodies. And they'll call it on Padgett. Duke by 21 to head to the final four with only one loss. Back to Cincinnati. Duke beat both of these teams on the floor right now. It beat uh, Kentucky by 11 and Michigan State by six. I uh, mentioned it earlier. They led Michigan State 21 to four at the top of that game before the Spartans crawled within three, only to drop it by six. Uh, Jim, that's the second time that Duke has uh, upset John Cheney's bid to get into the uh, Final Four. And back in 1988, the great game by Billy King, Garden, uh, Mark Macon, shutting him down. Danny Ferry's club went to the Final Four, losing to Kansas. Andre Hudson returns for Smith. It looks like Ranger getting some instructions out there, and probably those instructions are just keep lighting it up. Yeah. You take uh, Granger, who comes in from off the bench and knock down a couple of threes, take him away. The Michigan State starters have made only one out of ten shots. Cleves back in the ball game now. Had a chance to watch what's going on out there. Let's see how he settles down his club on the offensive end. Evans is becoming the toughest matchup, and he really wants the ball. Allison, last minute over to Padgett on the wing for the three, and it spins out. Last touch by Michigan State's Bell. Now that's the second time in this game that Hudson and Bell have gotten messed up. Remember, Jim, on that long pass, Hudson intercepted Bell. That time, Bell had the easy rebound. Hudson came over his back. Needs to be a little better communication there. Michigan State drops back in his zone on this out-of-bounds situation. I think a good defense against this basketball team right now. So Kentucky proves they've got somebody other than Patrick can make a jump shot. Evans doing it all. Back to Allison. Short in the lane, but back out to Turner. A long Kentucky trip. Will it result in points? Oh, Padgett wanted the ball back. There, he got it. And he's hammered by Peterson. Well, you know, Padgett was really disappointed because he made a great cut down through the zone and didn't get the ball. We see it right here. Great pass by Turner. Hey, when you've played with a guy as many games, as many hours as those two have, you know exactly where he is and when he's open. He didn't need to holler or hold up his hands. Turner just felt him there. Scott Padgett, who yesterday was asked what was his most prized memory or what will be of his Kentucky career, and he says, hasn't happened yet. It will be his degree when he receives it in May. There's his father, Wilbur. He you know, still in his son, that love of Kentucky basketball. Scott said he was always confident he could play ball, but he thought that freshman year of the college work was just impossible. And once he got the handle on it, he's been Dean's List and will graduate in May. Dean's List several times. Padgett's amazing, shooting 68% on the year for the foul line, but in the NCAA tournament, he has a chance to move right up there with one of the all-time leaders, Christian Leitner, and Bill Bradley, who's the all-time greatest free throw shooter in NCAA tournament history. He had 90%. To, he had to make two free throws to qualify and statistically, he and he just did it. Yep. Bradley, all-time number one, 90% in the tournament. Hudson, fadeaway, nice. nice shot. Yeah, so Padgett's into the top five all-time. He's behind Bradley, but he's ahead of Christian Leitner. You know, Hudson is becoming a major scorer in this postseason play, where Peterson has fallen back some. Oh, and away from the ball, McGlure has called for it. Monday on CBS, find out why TV Guide is calling it the best season yet for Everybody Loves Raymond. Monday night's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond, right here on CBS. The first on McGlure. I think it'd be a good time right now to go to Antonio Smith down inside. McGlure's got a foul. Get Smith some touches. He hasn't had many offensive looks the last couple of games. Peterson, leaner for two. Uh-oh, who's the foul? 
Did McGlure get to Smith? They're gonna call it on Peterson. No, not on Peterson. Hold on a minute here. Watch this. Here's what I've been talking about. McGlure talking, pushing in there. He might have gotten to Smith some. And Smith has called for it, Billy. Foolish foul by a senior. Badgett and the Cats get a little cozy, and they lead by eight. Ashimu Evans with 12 points, and Mateen Cleaves has not scored two tries from the field. It's been as big a lead as 13 for the Wildcats, down to eight. Tim, one of the things that Evans is such an explosive scorer, and, but I, I think we're going to see Michigan State go to a little bit more zone defense, try to get themselves back in a situation to get on the boards and force Kentucky to shoot from the outside a little bit. Evans' penetration has been outstanding. And with the team that's on the floor right now, Prince a decent outside shooter. Pageant is as well, but Michigan State comes back out in that man-to-man -man defense. So far, Kentucky has really been able to take advantage of it. There they've got Bell on Paget. Paget too big for him. Paget with the fake, the ball fake, but Peterson almost stripped it. And it leads to a Michigan State takeaway. Michigan State's only losses this year to Temple, which made it to the final eight. Duke and UConn, which are all set now for the final four, and Wisconsin, 32 and four. Jim Antonio Smith only had one shot in the ball game against Oklahoma. They need to get him the ball some down in low. Peterson over the top of Evans, it's a two. That'll, if they get the ball down in low, that can open up some things for the likes of Peterson and Bell. Good comeback by Michigan State. Evans wanted to set some back screens. Prince didn't come off. The first spurt of the game for the Spartans, a six-point run. They're giving LaGlore an opportunity to handle the ball inside. Turner, way short. And last touch by Michigan State, third time they fumbled it under the basket. New 35-second shot clock as well because it touched Michigan State. Michael Bradley returns for McGlure. Kentucky approaching four minutes without a field goal. Misfiring on their last five. Bradley hasn't been able to get into the offensive maneuver as well. He was a real scoring threat halfway through the season. There he is open inside. Bradley snaps it over to Padgett, right back over to Turner. Regains control of it. Back out high. Look at this passing. Three-point shot. Back to the rim. Spartans chase it down. Smith now over 1,000 rebounds in his career. That only trails two guys there, right. Billy. All time in Michigan State history. Greg Kelser and Johnny Green. Up in Johnny Green, 1957, led Michigan State Spartans to the Final Four, losing in three overtimes to North Carolina. One of the great leapers in college basketball history. Only about 6'5". Five. five on the shot clock underneath. Hudson and one. As weak side held that time by Padgett, but Evans did not drop down to fill in the space. That's the second on Evans. This team was down 17 to four. Jim, we'll see what happens right here. Padgett comes over, but Evans has to drop back down and fill. Thumbs up, says Wayne Turner. Please. Hey, uh, hey we, uh, us too, says yeah. Mateen. <laughs> and they, know, they know what that means. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. It's not like teams don't scout each other. Hudson he made his last six attempts against Oklahoma, completes the three-point play. So it's a nine-point run for the Spartans as Saul Smith replaces Evans to the bench with two, two personals. Klein, who'd been almost a 10-point-per-game scorer, has really dropped off. Hudson, who was at 8-6, has moved up. So kind of a uh, standoff there. Don't want Turner to get that close to the basket. He's strong with the shot. 
Smith, one of those guys, has a nose for the ball. Boy, he just goes for rebounds. Leaves got caught for a moment. Smith comes back out with it. Nice decision by Smith. He was off balance for the shot. Switch off. Cleves will take the jumper. And Padgett has it for Kentucky. Chasing that down. And Antonio showing some real speed himself. You're talking about a 265 pounder here. Actually weighs less than one of his brothers, who's an NFL football player at 290. But good job by Saul Smith chasing oh, it down. Is that it? Would have cut the lead to one. Yeah, he has two brothers. One, Fernando, plays in the NFL. Fernando Smith, the brother of Antonio. And Robert, who's a defensive end at Michigan State. So. There's a little size in that family. I guarantee you, nobody picked in that neighborhood on that family. <laughs> it, when they said, boys, let's get the neighborhood quiet, I guarantee it got quiet. And there were some second helpings, too, <laughs> at the table. Saul Smith, three-pointer, short. Prince, oh, yes, so is it in. That breaks a six-minute drought. Kind of interesting. Tubby's changed his lineup here from what he's been doing, and there's what Cleves and Turner does do so well. They can take the ball to the hoop and create. Cleves anticipating the pass out, was ready to step out for a steal. Here we've got that second unit in now. But the one thing that Kentucky is not going to be able to do against Michigan State is wear them down because Michigan State's bench is productive too. Seven on the shot clock. Kamara out high with the pick. Smith needs some help. Boy, what a great job by Antonio Smith. He got caught in the mismatch and stayed right with a guard. Lou Evans leads all scorers with 12, but the Kentucky 13-point lead is down to three. With Bonnie Bernstein and Billy Packer, Jim Nance from St. Louis. We discussed earlier Ohio State's season and the report card. They're advancing to the Final Four to take on the UConn Huskies. And what about the Huskies report card, Billy? Well, this is a very well-balanced team. They have explosive scoring. Even though El Amin yesterday was 0 for 12, you know that he can light it up. They really have no Final Four experience, and that could cost them a little bit. Maybe the, the, the excitement of getting there and points off the bench, they can come off with some explosive scores as well. So very well-balanced team. Connecticut's tough out for anybody. Connecticut versus Ohio State all set. It'll be Duke against the winner of this game in St. Petersburg next Saturday. Let's see Kentucky. They drop back to the 2-3 zone now. Peterson's a guy to be looking for here. They've got Klein and Peterson on the elbows. It's not like Granger's not a pretty good shooter, too, so this should match up well against this defense. Well, they double-teamed Granger the minute he touched it. Five on the shot clock. Klein must do something. Uh, he didn't want to take the shot. The heave from Cleves and back out to him. What they ought to do against this particular defense is put somebody on the foul line right in the middle and get the ball in the middle and then out to the opposite side. Jason Klein can tie it. Just still ice cold. Go. Yep, ice cold. And Tom Izzo walks down the other end of the bench and just turns his head. He's got to have some points out of Klein in a game like this. Klein 0 for 4 from the field. Boy, McGlure just bodying on the inside and beats Granger with power. Before the shot, Granger whistled for it. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half, Greg and Clark along with Coach Majerus, and we'll get you caught up on all the tournament news, plus a conversation with Final Four-bound Ohio State coach Jim O'Brien, all coming up on Penn's Oil at the half. Jim, we're playing in the Dome, and Kentucky has won six straight in the Dome. I mean, 17 straight overall, all six of their games. The SEC tournament was played in the Georgia Dome, then they were down the Superdome for two, and back here, so they sure don't mind the depth perception with their shooting. Prince. Example. There's a three. That's yes, overall, Billy, you said it. 17 straight Dome wins. 
Scott Padgett uh, asked him about that yesterday, and he said he thinks it's not so much the atmosphere, it's the fact that Kentucky has such a huge throng of supporters, and they can always have more Kentucky fans in a dome than anybody else. So, have a big factor. Yeah, it really feels like a home game because Kentucky does travel. So the three by Prince ups the lead to six. You look at the tournament summary, the Big Ten with a 12 and five record, certainly deserving uh, as it appears now, Billy, the seven spots. Yeah, absolutely. What conference had the best win percentage in this year's tournament? The West Coast Conference with Gonzaga three and one, 75% win percentage. You know, I say something about that team, Jim. I hadn't seen them all year until obviously this NCAA tournament. After watching them yesterday, they were not an upset team. That was not a Cinderella basketball team. That team could play on this court or any other court with any other team in the United States. I mean, a really high caliber basketball team. Magnificent run enjoyed by all by the Gonzaga Bulldogs to the final eight. Final 145 and a half. Peterson on the drive and a block on McGlure, who bounces to his feet. Can't believe it. Let's check the CBS Sportsline stat to this point and uh, offensive rebounds Kentucky with more second chances than Michigan State. We've got complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com. Morris Peterson to shoot two. All Big Ten first team, but accepted the role on this team as being a sixth man. I kind of felt for him yesterday because uh, they limit the access to the players and coaches on that day between the semifinal and the final here at the regionals. And they brought up for Michigan State all five starters, but not Morris Peterson, and he's all Big Ten and a starter. So not recognized as one of the five yesterday even. He operates quietly and efficiently. Well, I don't think that's the kind of thing that would knock him off stride. He's already accepted. He knows what he's accomplished. This is where that ball needs to spend more time. Down in Smith's hands to force the Kentucky defense to collapse a little bit. Granger for a third time today. A.J. Granger. Boy, and Tom Izzo can be so happy with that young man because he's picked up the slack where Klein has fallen off. This and he looks so positive with that jump shot, doesn't he? He does. He is the Spartan star of the first half with nine. Reach around, called on Klein. Say something about Granger, too. His biggest point production on the year was the day after he learned that his father had had that horrible accident, surfing accident in Hawaii. He came back and, and, and had his biggest point production of the season. So shows the kind of concentration and competitor a young man is. His father fractured two vertebrae while body surfing over in Hawaii. The Spartans were over in a tournament. And there he is. There's Joe Granger. Now, you can't get too excited, even with his son hitting three out of three from three. It's kind of, uh, you talk about having to harness your enthusiasm. And Prince for a second time. Well, he's hit two from the outside. And remember that nice curling hook shot he made inside. Tubby Smith is amazing how he manipulates this bench and seems to find answers every game coming off. It was Kamara two days ago, and now it's Prince. There's the zone, but still, nobody in the center. Klein at last, and that knocks it down to two. Tom Izzo just looks up at the Lord and says, thank goodness he's hit one. And how important to hit it right before the half so he doesn't have to sit in that locker room wondering one when one's ever going to go down. Shot clock is turned off. Could be the biggest shot of his career right there to get his confidence restored. And a 20 called by Tubby. He loves to do this. Set plays. He's screaming at his club to get over. While we have a moment, let's check the data bank, Billy. Final four appearances in the 1990s. The Cats with four. And the Big Ten Conference overall with five. Well, Jim, let me point out something. If Kentucky were to get to this final four this year, they would tie North Carolina and UCLA with right. 14 as the three schools that have the most final four appearances of anybody in the history of basketball. Carolina and UCLA lead the way. 14 all-time final four appearances. And the Cats just one behind. They can join them today at the top. Little Sullivan. Kamara left open, and Turner spotted him. Terrible 
this read by Michigan State. Cleves has to fire it. Oh! Oh, what a shot to go to the locker room. He's made three this year at the buzzer or thereabouts to go for victories. And how big was that one? Huge. Cleves not known for his outside shooting, but can he handle it when the seconds are winding down? It's got so much courage, but it was a big breakdown defensively that set that up for Michigan State. He had a pretty good look and release on this shot. That's All the most that. range we've seen him have in two years of watching. <laughs> That's the end of the first half. And there's Mateen's mother. Just loving it, as she should. Francis gets a... A celebratory hug. What if she's wearing those lucky socks? She says she wears them dirtier clean. She probably had them on there. Kentucky leads 36-35 at halftime. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Pontiac Grand Am. Microsoft. The United States Postal Service. And by Scott's Lawn Products. Michigan State 36-35. I'm joined once again by Clark Kellogg and Utah coach Rick Majerus. Most of the first half of this game seemed to belong to Kentucky, and then all of a sudden, back come the Michigan State Spartans. Well, early in, the, early in the half, Kentucky was getting fast break baskets, and they were getting too many easy second shots. They had sometimes two and three rebound attempts. Uh, Michigan State did a good job of addressing that the later part of the half. And then you got to credit Granger. He connects for three long balls. And I'll tell you what, now they're back in the game. Well, when you consider what Michigan State has to do, I think when you look at the second half of this game, both of these teams rely on their perimeter shooting to be the best they can be. The transition game, I think, has to kick into high gear for Michigan State to stay close and have a chance to win it. All right, we're trying to find out which is going to be the fourth Final Four team earlier. Duke qualified to move on with an 85-64 to 64 win over Temple, and we'll play the winner of the game that you're watching, Kentucky and Michigan State. Just a reminder, you can chat live with UCLA head coach Steve Lavin. This Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Log on to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Simply enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Yesterday, Ohio State advanced to the Final Four by defeating St. John's to win the South Regional. Early this morning, the Buckeyes returned home to Columbus where they were greeted by an ecstatic gathering of fans. Ohio State will face UConn in one of the na national semifinals on Saturday. And we are now joined now by the Buckeyes head coach, Jim O'Brien. Coach, first and foremost, congratulations to you. You jumped from an 8-22 and 22 season to the Final Four. And I know people across the country are wondering how this happened. Are you sitting there wondering how this happened? Yes, I am, quite frankly, uh, Greg. I, it's been a remarkable season for us, uh, you know, coming off of a very difficult season a year ago. Uh, my humble expectations were for us to possibly just win more than we would lose to show some pretty good progress. But it's a real credit to the kids on our team for staying with us all year long. We just started to get better and better and win some games. And, and here we are. We find ourselves in a great position. Jim, I wanted to talk a little bit about Ken Johnson. All season long, he's been a pretty consistent presence for you defensively. Was there a concentrated effort, seeing that he had a size advantage against St. John's inside people, to really try to get him off offensively? Well, Clark, as you know, he's been getting progressively better and better. Uh, even from a year ago, he was somebody we really didn't have a lot of confidence in throwing the ball to. Uh, yesterday, we threw the ball into him, and he just seemed comfortable around the basket offensively. We knew that uh, he got off to a great start, blocking a couple of shots. It seemed like he was playing with a lot of confidence and a lot of energy early. And when we first threw the ball into him, uh, he made a basket. We threw it into him again. He missed the shot, but it was right on the rim. He really seemed comfortable in everything he was doing. And then we really felt when Grant went out, then our test was on him that he had a decided advantage height-wise, and he was just putting the ball in the basket. So we kept trying to go to him a little bit more than we typically did. Jim, how do you expect to play UConn, and do you have anything specific in mind relative to defending Richard Hamilton? Well, not really, uh, Rick. I think, you know, from my experiences with Connecticut, uh, quite frankly, that haven't all been very good. Uh, the thing that you have to do with them is you have to get back defensively. The two things with them is you can't turn the ball over. I think they do a very good job in their pressure with their defense, but you must get back in transition. They remind me an awful lot like Michigan State uh, because Michigan State is somebody that we had to deal with getting back in transition. Connecticut is great in going from defense to offense in a hurry. 
Jim, we don't know, and this is a two-part question, we don't know if MTV knows anything about you, but the question is, how long have you been doing this little post-game dance, <laughs> and did you learn your steps from Rick Majerus at all? No. No. <laughs> You can learn an awful lot from Rick. Dancing is not one of them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes we do the craziest things. I just hope that I didn't embarrass my daughters too much, but uh, these guys on our team have been trying to get me to do the, the dirty bird all year long. <laughs> so I finally broke down and had to give them a little one-two. Jim, we thank you for your time, and we will look forward to seeing you in St. Petersburg next Saturday. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks for having me on. You bet. Coach Jim O'Brien of Ohio State. Let's quickly set this Saturday's lineup for you. It begins at 4 o'clock Eastern time with the Final Four show. We'll get you caught up on the latest news and set the stage for the semifinal doubleheader. 542, the semifinal between Ohio State and UConn gets underway, followed at about 817 by the game between Duke and the winner of the game you're watching, Kentucky or Michigan State. Thanks for watching Pennzoil at the half. Coming up the second half of the Midwest Regional Final, we'll send you back to Jim and Billy in St. Louis right after this as you take a look at how Turner and Evans execute a two-on-one break. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Penzor. All I'm going to do, I'm never going to score. Here we're going to see K Kentucky with great rotation and a step out for the screener. Now watch what happens for Evans right here. He starts this play. He's going to pass and go away, setting a screen for Padgett coming out. Padgett will come out, and the ball's going to be reversed. Then Evans, who was the original screener in this play, will step out and be wide open for the shot from outside. Evans had a great first half. Terrific ball rotation by Kentucky. Kentucky will have the first possession of the second half, led by Moo Evans in the first 20 minutes. He had 12 points, topping the Cats. Five assists by Wayne Turner with no turnovers. Jim, major bench play by both teams. Michigan State, 18 of their 35 from the bench. For, for Kentucky, 14 of 36. We thought that would be a standoff, and both of these teams sure did get production, particularly a guy like Granger and Prince. And Bradley pushed out of the way by Hudson. Hudson trying to set the screen, moved him out with his lower body. If Ranger and Prince had very similar numbers in the first half, both three for three from the field. Granger all three from behind the arc for nine. Prince made two of them for back there for eight. Bradley just not getting the offensive production he had at midseason. He's wide open on the side. Allison found him and he lays it in. Just exactly what Coach Izzo said to Bonnie. Some real breakdowns in communication defensively have allowed, allowed wide open shots for Kentucky. Now let's see if Klein in his first jump shot in the second half gains some confidence by the one he made. Hudson bounces out and Evans underneath clears. That is the third time today Hudson has missed one from right at the rim. Huge baskets in a game like this that's so hotly contested. And a reach around on Bell. He held him. I'm really surprised at Michigan State. Here we see Smith trying to save it. Evans getting things started, and there is the breakdown because what happened is Smith went to the corner to save the ball. Nobody picked up in his man. What's up? Matching up in this zone. Adds it on the blocks, works it in. Oh, Smith kept it alive. Beautiful job on his part. Gets the outlet to the Cleaves. To the right side, the Bell. Off the glass for two. Beautiful. Charlie Bell, his first two points of the game. Really good job by being under control by Bell. But how about Smith? He's not a great leaper, but he uses that body and his timing so well and actually kept that ball alive on the second tip. A lot of switching now by Michigan State, and that's what got them in some trouble. They haven't been communicating very well on the switches. Allison flying on the back of them. And one. Solid young man since he's got into this starting lineup. Doesn't have big numbers. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Plays a very smart ball game. Here he is coming to meet the pass. Good drop step down in his side. Realized he had the advantage in position and put it up. It's the third on Klein. 
Allison pump faking once and have a chance for a three point play. What an athlete at Robinson High School in Tampa where he averaged 34 points a game in basketball played on the track or competed for the track team where he ran a five minute mile and anchored their 1600 relay team all the way to the state finals. He was at uh, the Tropicana Field Regional last year cheering for Kentucky having already signed with the Cats and now he could go there in uniform next week. And here we see Kentucky picking up full court. They want Cleves to come back and get the ball but Turner did a terrific job making sure Cleves wouldn't be part of that. Hit by Turner and off Kentucky. Jim, I remember I mentioned that they are not making Kentucky have to guard the low post area. And you look at the stats in the first half, Smith did not have one single attempt. They have got to make Kentucky be much more honest defensively by getting the ball into him some. Not that he's a prolific scorer, but they're having all their offense started on the perimeter. Leaves. There's up once and Bell for a second time. Wow, look at this. What a battle. They'll call it a tie up situation. Turner was in there. Peterson for Michigan State. And it's Michigan State's ball. You see the black band on the shoulder of the Wildcats. That's for the lost recruit, John Stewart, who passed away last week as they were competing, in fact, in the first round against New Mexico State on that day. John Stewart, a seven foot senior in Indiana, had a heart attack, a fatal heart attack during a high school playoff game. Peterson with the basket for Michigan State. Tubby Smith left here last Thursday to attend his wake and took along a Kentucky uniform for that young man. He was here, it was Tubby Thursday for practice, and then along with his wife Donna, they flew to the wake in Indianapolis and presented the family with the Kentucky jersey number 53 he would have worn Allison on the drive Evans underneath comes out with the strong hands over the back Evans wanted that thought he got pushed on the shot that's the third on Evans that's a big foul Jim not only does he not get the basket but he picks up that over the over the back foul and Evans is really important to this team as it goes down to the stretch with all his experience he's going to have to sit and they'll bring in Tayshawn Prince who again scored eight points in relief in the first half Duke advancing to the final four yet again beating Temple in the East final Good recognition by Peterson, realizing that Turner was shadowing Cleves, couldn't get the ball back to the primary ball handler, so he took it over half court himself. Two to tie, three for the first lead of the game for the Spartans. McGlure now out there, little mismatch, Cleves can go by him, nice. Good give up, Smith converts, there he is. That was a very smart play by Mateen Cleves, he recognized on the switch, McGlure came out on him and Mateen just took him to the hole with superior quickness. First time it's tied since two all. And again, getting that ball down inside to make Kentucky be honest defensively. McGlure to the hole and to the line now for two. Have you ever seen anybody uh, turn around a season like this young man has in terms of not only defensively where he we knew he could he's one of the most prolific shot blockers in NCAA history NCAA tournament history but now he's starting to do it on the offensive end and again as I mentioned early in the first half I think you front this guy and make him make tough catches if he gets the ball down that low he has a little drop step move to get a score. McGlure is really evolving into some kind of leader here for Kentucky. I talked to him about it yesterday, and I think there's a realization that with the moving on of these three seniors, Turner, Evans, and Padgett, that next year it'll be McGlure's role as team captain. Quite vocal, and really coming on, as you said, Billy, here in the last month. Well, he came on as a heralded recruit. Young man from Canada. The team just threw that up there to keep it alive. There's Smith's strength. Look at him wrap it around the pass to Cleves. Good fake from the line for the lead. And Michigan State, for the first time today, is in front. 
Terrific job by Tom Izzo's club to come back when Kentucky had him almost in a knockout position early in his ballgame. It was 17 to 4 at the start. And give a young man named Granger a lot of credit for bringing him back in that first half. They were in serious trouble. And with Evans on the bench, that was a critical third foul because he's a guy you'd want on the floor right now if you're Tubby Smith. Granger will come in on the next whistle for the Spartans. Seven on the shot clock, Turner and Cleves. Here's the matchup. Turner lost control of it. Cleves stood his ground. He sure did, Jim. Excellent footwork defensively by Cleves. Turner wanted the crossover dribble, just wasn't there. I think Cleves is starting to get some offensive confidence, too, on his shot situation. Peterson drives. Blocked by McGloin. Retrieves. Back out. Bell left open. Cleves, they whip it around. Great passing. Peterson short. That extra pass will always give you the wider open looking shot. This just they got what they wanted. Magic short. No spark for Kentucky. And they're down one. I think there's inside Hudson and Padgett reached around. The spark, Jim, is sitting on the bench over there in Evans, who took them off. I think maybe Tubby's going to have to show us does he have the courage to come back in with that big substitution pattern. What a pass. Michigan State with this basket takes the lead for the first time today. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein in St. Louis. The Duke report card, straight A's, Billy. Well, no, wait, wait a minute. Achilles heel, limited backward resources. Well, remember the St. John's game that went into overtime. They had foul trouble on Avery, foul trouble on Trajan Langdon, and they really don't have what you would consider the traditional point guard backup situation. But like Rick Majerus said, and he's been really fun to listen to in that studio, he's already figuring out, hey, how do you play this team? They have such great balance, a lot of confidence. The coach has been there before. Great out of balance play, but it just didn't work. So they are, that Duke is going to be, they, we all have known it, they're the team to beat. And so far, nobody's been able to much less beat them and stay close to them. Prince draws the foul in the act of shooting. And again, the Blue Devils will take on the winner of this game. And the Blue Devils have beaten both Michigan State and Kentucky during the regular season. The academic All-Stars recognize one player on each team for academic excellence. For tonight's game, the All-Stars are Jamal McGlure from Kentucky and Andre Hudson from Michigan State. Prince ties it with that one. You know, Scott Padgett was reflecting a few weeks back on Kentucky's eight losses on the year, 28 and 8 overall, and he felt that uh, they really had only lost one game. They should have won the rest, he said. The only game we Duke. lost was Duke. Yep. Then we played soft and we backed down to him that time. I know they, like Michigan State, would love that second chance. Prince gives uh, Kentucky the lead back. Good pass over the top. Nice recognition by Peterson. Jim, I, I wouldn't agree with Pageant on that. You know, I think that Tennessee took it to him, and I thought twice, Arkansas. Twice. Yeah, in Arkansas. I didn't see the game in Kentucky, but we had the game at Tennessee, and we had the game at Arkansas, and I'm not going to take anything away from those two teams. They beat Kentucky's on those days. But they weren't sloppy ball clubs either. It's not like they were beaten by teams that couldn't play. They've only played one Big Ten team this year. That was Indiana in December. They beat Indiana in overtime. Peterson, jump stop, shot, no good. But look at him chase it down. Cleaves, he's open. Dean doesn't like to take that outside jump shot. He'd rather have to pump fake and drive. Rangers, he's still perfect. He got ball. Well, Padgett. Now, Jim, we That's have the huge, Padgett. huge problems for Kentucky. You've got their two of their three key senior leaders in serious foul trouble. Evans has had to sit on the bench, and now it's going to be Padgett. He doesn't want to come out. This Kentucky team, this is the fifth straight year they've been in the regional final. Right, people forget in 95 they played North Carolina down in Birmingham. Absolutely. And you know, they could be just as easily working on three straight national crowns. That's right. Ooh, and up there for Arizona, Arizona overtime. in overtime. And Joe Granger. Did, uh, again, restricted in how much he can react, but <laughs> enjoying every second of it. It was interesting when his son heard about the accident, he knew that his father, who he says is kind of like a, a wild and crazy kind of guy, he said it, it didn't, now that they know that he's going to be okay, he said it didn't surprise him because his dad's a real risk taker. 
It was a tough Normally month. it's the other way around where the father says, well, you know, I'm nervous That's about right. my son, you know. But a tough month for the Granger family. And his mother as well had an auto accident in November. But this young man is playing. He is having a great regional. Three for three from the field, all threes, and now three for three from the line. Kentucky has gone five minutes without a made field goal. And now look at that lineup on the floor. Only one normal starter. So this is an odd lineup for Kentucky. Normally, they have Hogan out there, but they keep turning the game. Nice. Nice. Roll to you know, it's amazing that Michigan State has played solid defense, but then they have huge breakdowns that lead to direct baskets. There was another example. Nobody helping out on the weak side against that pick and roll. All tied at 46. Boy, these two teams just mirror themselves in terms of how they want to play. Exactly what we expected. Nice hedge and recover. Set on the shot clock. Leaves knows it, five on the clock. He almost likes that situation, but the ball didn't hit anything. He threw that up, Jim, in the idea, with the idea that he's got a good rebounding team and they'd go get the ball. Unfortunately for him, Smith was not in the game. Michigan State's first turnover in 13 minutes on the clock. Now, where do the points come from in this lineup? Brents gave him some in the first half. Eight and all. McGlure wants it inside, and again, they're playing right behind him, giving him good position down low. Boy, a lot of banging. Kamara backs down the defender and misses the chippy. Oh, look, you see what Cleese yeah, from his back. Back. From the floor. On his back, made the play. I think Kentucky's got to figure out a way to spring either Evans or Padgett in the game to get some scoring in the game with 11 minutes to go. Take the chance they don't get into further foul trouble. But Tubby Smith, he has got so much guts in terms of how he substitutes. Underneath another floor, and Prince comes out with it. Another block by McGlure. Turner pushes it up. Back to Prince, who will drive. And then stalls. Got a timeout on the floor. It was a one-point game at halftime, and now it's all tied with 11 minutes left here in St. Louis in the final spot of the Final Four. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. Gateway. Conseco. And by Honda Cycle. Jim, we've talked so much about what a screener can do, and I want you to watch Jamal McGlure on this particular play. He's going to set a solid screen, and then watch how he opens up to the ball as the screener comes off. By opening up, he he's able to see the good pass and roll to the basket. Now watch him open up to the ball. Perfect pass. Michigan State doesn't get there in time. Beautiful execution. All right, Billy, let's send it over to Bonnie. Bonnie Bernstein. Jim, coming out of the half, Tom Izzo told me how disappointed he was with his team's rebounding. You see how much more aggressive they are under the board one of the reasons why they're tied with Kentucky. And there just happens to be a record-setting number of fans here today at the Trans World Dome to watch these two teams vibe for a Final Four bid. 42,519 people here. Largest crowd ever to watch an NCAA regional semifinal or final, Jim. Wow, and it is loud in here. And Prince will go to the line for two. This building will be the site of the Final Four. Long way out, but it'll be here in 2005. Jim, Michigan State content to play behind low post players from Kentucky. It gives you a perfect look to throw the ball down in low, and guys like Prince and McGlure have, oh, two to three inches over the guy that's normally guarding them. Kamara would, would likewise. I really think it'd be smart for Kentucky to go down inside, down inside, because there are two key outside shooters sitting on the bench right now in Evans and Padgett. Prince, like Granger, perfect from the field and from the line. Three for three, three for three. And what Tom Izzo is trying to do is to give Antonio Smith some rest on that bench. Turner 
saves it. What a save. Kamara lays it in. What a burst by Kentucky. And check this defensive pressure. Full court pressure. Picking up. Forcing the ball into the corners. Great job by Kentucky. I don't know how Turner stayed in the air long enough to save it. He just kept going up and up and up. And those long arms finally grabbed the ball. Hudson left free for an easy two. Nice job coming down on the baseline by Hudson. And Jim, remember you talked about what Padgett said about his fans. You notice how all of a sudden it's almost like a Kentucky home game when they get a run like that. As far as noise and support. And away from the ball, Hudson and McGlure were battling for position underneath. And they got Hudson. Tonight on 60 Minutes, even though the jury said the mother wasn't guilty of murder, the child welfare agency said she was. What's that all about? 60 Minutes tonight. You know, when you look at starting positions, it's kind of interesting. Bradley and McGlure are the Kentucky center position. And when you take each one of them and break them down, it's not like they have great stats, but you put them together because that basically represents your 40 minutes. And, and combined, they've got fifth, they've got 9.4 rebounds a game and about 17 points a game. Now that would be one fine player at the center position. So these two guys coordinate well down there. McGlore hits the front end of a one and one. It is a good combo and you can imagine how much. And 10 fouls. And the, but the physicality of McGlure's game, how much that's also improved Michael Bradley's development. All right, and here's the press again. They're wanting the ball to go in the corner so they can trap. There it is. Bad place for the ball to be. Up over to Peterson. They wanted that ball to be passed exactly where they had good defensive pressure. Michigan State handling it. Look at Cleves settling everybody down. Kind of like he was the high school quarterback. Granger. Nice. Rejected by McGlure, the second block of the game. Out to Klein. That's blocked by Allison, who breaks early. But into the arms of Peterson for two. Peterson, the leading scorer. On this basketball team, right under 14 points a game. Can score inside, outside, get a full arsenal here, this young man. Kentucky with a two-point lead. Two Giants colliding. What will give here in the end, in the final nine minutes? Walk. Not call. Kamara too strong. Out to Cleves. Got a man breaking. It's Hudson. Hudson can tie it. And he'll go to the line. It's a block against Kentucky, against Allison. How smart was that play by Hudson? The ball was passed to the point where if he'd have caught it on the fly, he would have had to catch it at his ankle. So instead, he just veered out a little bit and let the ball drop. See that? That was a terrific move on his part. He realized if he had to reach down for it, there's no way he was going to be able to convert the dribble. You talked about Cleves being a high school quarterback. This man was, too. He was the varsity starter as a freshman back in Ohio. Trockwood, Ohio is his hometown. And gave it up after his junior year. He had no passion for football, just wanted to concentrate on basketball, even though he had some interest expressed to his high school coach from the likes of Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Paterno and Penn State, and even Tennessee. Could have been on the, on the football roster with Peyton. You know, those kind of schools don't look at you if you can't play football, so you know he must have been some prospect. Back into the game, Evans and Padgett for Kentucky, each with three fouls. And there again, that confidence that Tubby has in that bench to keep two players so critical to his offense on the bench that long. Basically, he's got his starting lineup, Les Bradley, McGlure, who, like I said before, is just like a starter out there. Allison steps to the hole, nice move. Back to a three-point lead. Cleves pushes it forward. And Evans caught up, and Kentucky's defense gets set. I think Allison thought they were in the zone. Talking about zone defense. Out to Granger. That's a two. Granger still perfect. Boy, he is squaring up at the basket so beautifully. 
And these are not just lucky shots from a big man coming out into this ballgame. He did it the other day as well. He leads the Spartan attack with 14. Getting close to his season high of 16. And he had that against Alabama. Padgett with only one made field goal in this game. It's one of his favorite spots. Up ahead, there's the quarterback to quarterback combo. And Michigan State's back in front. And a good hesitation by Hudson. That time Padgett fell asleep. He didn't get back for defensive balance. Those used to go for six for Mateen Cleaves. But he'll take the two here as Michigan State leads with 7.15 remaining. He'd have rather had the six, Jim. <laughs> Evans lost well, it, that'll be a violation. Traveling. And a whistle on the floor, a timeout. Some might call it a home run, I'll call it a touchdown pass. How about the catch wasn't bad either? Turner and Padgett have been silenced in the point production in with six total between the two of them. But you're loving that pass from Cleves to Hudson. Well, what's this guy in St. Louis? Tony Banks say hey, maybe they want him right here. And look at this catch over the shoulder. Is that Andre Hudson or Don Hudson? That's, there you go. And then the double pump finish. Really a nice catch, great pass. And of course, uh, Cleves with that quarterback background, mm -hmm. you know, knew how to lead him perfectly. And Tony Banks, the quarterback of the Rams, who plays in this building, number 12 from Michigan State, just like Cleves. But they're not too happy with him here, Dick Vermeil. He may be looking to be scouting Cleves to dress him up, huh? <laughs> well, he's only a junior. And at one time he thought he's he got was he's got nothing to do in the fall. Yeah, Basketball doesn't start till December. At one time he was almost talked into being the next Charlie Ward down at Florida State well, playing the combo. You know, you can be a pro in one sport and still be eligible amateur in another, so. Oh. Charge call. The little call. And Evans, who had three. Boy, that would in there. That would have been a big one. We know this. Game one at the final four will be Ohio State and Connecticut. We've got a four and two ones already set. Will it be another one? That'll be the third time we've had three one seeds make it to the final four. Let me throw one out at you there, Jim. The incredible year Jim O'Brien has coach of the year in the Big Ten. He has lost 18 straight times to Jim Calhoun. Yep. 18 straight. Of course, that was at D.C. and Connecticut when he was back in the Big East. I don't think he'll concern himself about that, though. Pass. Stolen and a hold on Kentucky. And for the Cats, that's their 15th foul. Two away from the one on one. That's the fourth on Evans. Now he's going to have to sit, bringing him back here with about three minutes to go. For Kentucky, number 21, Sean Prince, back into the game. Boy, that name. Strong warrior really fits Evans, doesn't it? It's yep. just incredible. That is the uh, translation for Hashimu. Strong warrior, and it's going to take five of those on one side. Five strong mental warriors. They both pride themselves in conditioning. McGlora was boasting yesterday that we're the fittest team in America, and we're going to show that tomorrow, meaning today. Boy, I tell you, Michigan State was really lucky there. Great hands by Smith. And McClure rejects it. Came up from behind. That is his 34th block in NCAA tournament play. Outside, a hold called against State. Perfect timing by McGlure, and look at those huge hands go up there and get that ball. Looks like Ken Johnson of the Buckeyes yesterday. 